Hey, I'm Joel Klatt, and here's my top five quarterbacks for the 2019 college football season. At number five, Georgia's Jake Fromm. He played sensational last year. Really, there was only one blemish, and that was the only multi-interception game that he had all year, which was against LSU in that loss. Now, that loss ended up keeping them out of the playoff, but Fromm had a great year. He was sensational against Alabama in that SEC championship game, a large reason why they had that seven-point lead in the fourth quarter. I think he's going to have a big year for Georgia, and they need him to have a big year. He's going to be one of the top prospects also moving forward in the next spring's NFL draft. At number four is going to be Sam Ellinger at Texas. A lot of people have a problem with those of us that say Sam Ellinger is a great player. I'm not saying he's a great NFL prospect, and I don't have to preface my opinion. I don't have to apologize for putting Sam Ellinger as one of my best players in the country because he is. He does exactly what he needs to do to make Texas an elite team. In fact, the reason that they are an elite team is because that he is their quarterback. He's a perfect mold for Tom Herman. He doesn't turn the ball over, only six turnovers all season last year. He also plays great in big games. Think about it from the Red River perspective. Last year against Oklahoma, he had only thrown for 300 yards one time in his whole career. And then he comes out against the Sooners in the Cotton Bowl and throws for 300 yards and was sensational. Also ran for three touchdowns in that game. He's the reason why they won. I know Gus wants to tell you his dicker the kicker. I'm telling you that it was Sam Ellinger. He also played great against Georgia, 70%, no interceptions, three rushing touchdowns in that uh, Sugar Bowl. He was terrific in the Big 12 championship game, another 349 yards against Oklahoma, a couple more TDs. Only Murray could beat him in that one. The guy shows up to big moments. The lights are not too bright for him. He is the leader and the alpha of the Texas Longhorns. They are a top 10 team. They're a team that could potentially compete for a playoff spot, and in large reason, because of my number four quarterback, Sam Ellinger. At number three, I'm gonna go with Justin Herbert. If you were to ask me who the best NFL prospect is this year, I would probably say Justin Herbert. But there is a little bit of a concern for me. Last year, he regressed in both efficiency and completion percentage. I need him to take a step forward in that manner. He's got all the talent in the world. He's a big frame, strong arm quarterback, can throw it through a brick wall. But this is a guy that needs to play better in big moments. If Ellinger is the alpha that plays great when the lights are bright, I need that from a guy like Justin Herbert. If Oregon is going to have the season that some predict they can have, it's going to be because Justin Herbert, behind one of the best offensive lines in the country, plays his best football of his career. He cannot regress statistically this year in order to be one of the best prospects going into the next spring's NFL draft. So that's something to watch for for Justin Herbert. But for now, he's number three on my list. Number two is going to be Tua Tungavailoa. Uh, he's not number one, even though he set the efficiency record in the NCAA history last year, in large part because of the player that beat him in the national championship, which I'll get to at number one. But Tua had a sensational season. We all know that. And he was likely going to win the Heisman Trophy if it wasn't for a historic year from Kyler Murray. And rest assured, it took a historic year from Kyler Murray in order to snatch that Heisman away from Tua Tungavailoa. Even when he was injured late in the season, he played okay. He does need to play better against their toughest opponents. When you look at what he did against Georgia in the SEC Championship game, and when you look at what he did against Clemson in the National Championship game, you could argue that those were two of his worst performances of the year. So just as Justin Herbert needs to play better when the lights are the brightest, so does Tua. Similar to what he did in the second half two years ago, winning the national championship, replacing Jalen Hurts against Georgia in that game, he needs to find and channel that inner great player and star player when the lights are brightest. Ridiculous efficiency, by the way. 43 touchdowns, only six interceptions last year. Absolutely love him as a player. And number one, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'm all in, okay? So if I was an NFL GM, this would be a throwaway year. It would be the year before Andrew Luck came out. It would be the year before John Elway came out. It would be the year before Peyton Manning came out. This is, this is a no-brainer. This kid is incredible. Every time I watched him play, he got better 
and better and better. He had more command of the offense. He was making tighter window throws. He had more command of the pocket. He never played like a true freshman. This guy was sensational. Texas A&M played Clemson as close as anybody did all year long along with Syracuse. And that was early in the season when they were still trying to figure out their quarterback situation. Once they went with Trevor Lawrence and stuck with him, they became world beaters. The trajectory was off the charts. Look at what this guy did in the college football playoff against Notre Dame and against Alabama. 66%, 674 yards through the air, six touchdowns, no interceptions as a true freshman. That's insane. Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in college football.